I'm feeling good about the pile today because I know exactly what kind of tree I want wood from uh, and I know that there's some in there, but I don't know where quite yet. So let's dig through the pile for some pine. What's in that pile? Hold still, hold st ah! Aha, I think I'm gonna pull this log out without collapsing the whole stack. Uh, what we have is a piece that I think will look really cool if it is large enough, but I'm very doubtful that it's large enough. And we have this piece that's obviously plenty large. Uh, I'll cut it in half. Okay, one moment, please. Okay, so pine wood is the choice today because I want to try to make some pine nut gelato. I'll be turning the wood into a little dish to eat it out of, but first let's get started by making the gelato. Now, right off the bat, I gotta tell you, I wanted to make this recipe with pinion pine nuts. It's a tree that's native to my neck of the woods here in the Western US, but in my attempts to forage for some in the fall, I was beaten to the punch by grubs in every cone I found. In the end, I thought it might actually be for the best to have to go the grocery store route for this first attempt anyway, since that's how most people would have easy access to pine nuts of their own. I'm modifying a pistachio gelato recipe from America's Test Kitchen, and as you can see, I've started with a bunch of pine nuts, about one to two cups, and I first roasted them to bring out a much nuttier and richer flavor. Spread on a baking sheet and toast at 350 degrees, checking it around three to five minutes and removing when they're looking nice and toasty brown. Then into a food processor and just grind them up until you've got this almost chunky peanut butter-like consistency. Then into a large saucepan goes three and a half cups whole milk, one third cup heavy cream, three fourths cup sugar, one third cup light corn syrup, quarter teaspoon salt, combine and then add to medium high heat and stir frequently for five to seven minutes until tiny bubbles form around the edges. Then add the processed pine nuts and stir while removing from heat. Continue to mix things up until most of the large clumps are broken up. Cover the pot and let steep for about an hour or so. Then it's time to line a fine mesh strainer with some cheesecloth and pour the mixture on through. Press to extract as much liquid as you can, then gather up the edges of the cheesecloth and squeeze some more. Just try and get all that flavory goodness out of there. Now it's time to mix up some cornstarch, which is a gelato signature. Whisk together five teaspoons of it with a quarter cup of whole milk until fully combined and set aside. Now our pine nut milk mixture goes back into a clean saucepan where we'll add five egg yolks and whisk to combine. Bring to a gentle simmer over medium heat and cook, stirring occasionally, scraping the bottom of the pan with a rubber spatula until the custard reaches 190 degrees, about four to six minutes. Grab that cornstarch mixture and give it a quick whisk to recombine and then whisk it directly into the custard, cooking while stirring constantly for about 30 seconds until it thickens. Immediately pour into a bowl and let cool for about 20 minutes or so until no longer steaming. Then cover and put in the refrigerator to rest for anywhere from 6 to 24 hours. And while it's cooling, this is a perfect time to head back to the lathe to make our pine wood gelato dish. And while I do that, now it's time to talk pine nuts. They're simply the edible seeds of pine trees. Like I was showing earlier, they grow in between the scales of pine cones. Those seeds are fed on by all sorts of birds and animals, and in about 20 to 30 species of pines, the seeds are large enough for humans to eat and enjoy. As I mentioned at the top of this video, here in the U.S. we have our native pinion pines. And the name pinion pine comes from the Spanish word for pine nut, piñon, as when Spanish colonizers happened upon the tree, they associated its large edible nuts with those found in the European species. It's looking nice and round. So we're ready to flip it around, throw it on the chuck. Yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna be okay. As usual, I was overthinking and overstressing things, uh, but this should work. I think we're gonna be a-okay. Nice. Native American tribes from throughout the Pinion Pines native range have historically relied on the large and absolutely delicious nuts that these trees produce for thousands of years. To this day, the seed harvest rights of the Pinion Pine are owned by these tribes, where pine nuts continue to have enormous cultural and economic importance. Again, this was the tree I really wanted to make this gelato from, and I'll tell you right now, as soon as I get some quality Pinion Pine nuts, I'll be revisiting this recipe for sure. Another major pine nut producer is Europe's stone pine, Pinus pinea which have been cultivated for its nuts for thousands of years. Native to the Mediterranean, their long and thin looking nuts are used in all sorts of traditional Mediterranean cooking and baking. And when you think pine nuts as a base for pesto, for example, these are the traditional option there. 
Okay, so which type of pine nuts did I buy for this recipe here? The, the truth is I don't really know. That's kind of a challenging thing with pine nuts these days. In most any grocery store or even specialty market, the type of pine nut available to you is usually not referenced on the packaging, and it's almost certainly going to be one of three species. The Korean pine, the Siberian pine, or the Armand pine. All three produce smaller nuts that look pretty similar to one another. The Korean pines are slightly larger than the other two, but they're also the one you're least likely to find. So if you're buying a bag of pine nuts at the market or grocery store, it's most likely to be either from the Siberian or Armand pine. Now both of these species are prized for their flavor. They've got this sweet, buttery, nutty flavor to them. But with raw Armand pine nuts, you can sometimes get what's called pine mouth syndrome, where eating their raw nuts can produce a bitter metallic taste in your mouth for a few days up to even a couple weeks. So in using store-bought pine nuts, there's a solid chance that I've got Armand pine nuts on my hand, and I'm hoping that roast them was enough to avoid any chance of pine mouth coming from my gelato. But again, this is just further motivation for myself to hit the road soon and buy some pinion pine nuts from a local harvester, try this recipe again, and see how it compares. Speaking of which, the gelato dish is done, and honestly, I'm, I'm not the happiest with how this final shape turned out, but it was a cool piece of wood and a decent first try at something new. Also, the custard is sufficiently chilled out, so now it's time to churn in an ice cream maker. Transfer to a container and into the freezer to firm up for at least six hours or so before serving. So let's get back to the wood pile and snag some more pine wood to carve a gelato spoon. I decided to play around with the shape a little bit on this one to make something that felt kind of like those little plastic scoop spoon things that you get at your local gelato shop. You know the ones I'm talking about. I, I don't know. I, I just thought I'd have some fun with this shape. And hey, what do you know? I actually kind of like the way it turned out. It is fun, it's piney, and it should do a great job at shoveling pine nut gelato into my face. So let's serve up and dive in. First things first, the consistency of this gelato is a real winner. And I will 100% be using this recipe again, regardless of the flavor. But speaking of flavor, let's, let's give it a whirl. Ooh, okay, yeah. Mm. This is delicious. I can already tell I'm gonna wanna remake this with pinion pine nuts, just because there's such superior flavor in those, but this is still really good. It's got this nice, toasty, nutty flavor to it. Mm. Winner, winner, winner. Good news is definitely no pine mouth syndrome from this batch, so let me know in the comments your favorite pine nut recipes, and stay tuned next time when we find out what's in that pile.